shalom and welcome today on Back to Our Roots. We are going to experience a traditional Sabbath opening. I'm glad you're with us. Hello and welcome to Back to Our Roots. I'm Pastor Alex Schussler. And I'm Rachel Hyman, Minister of Music. This is Javez. And this is Lori. And we want to welcome you today to our program. Today is a very special program. Indeed, we are going to be looking at a traditional celebration of bringing in the Shabbat. Um, Rachel, this, this is going to be so exciting. I know we've had so many people really interested in this. So we're going to just get right into it. And a little bit later, we'll be explaining exactly what's happening. So just sit back and enjoy as from a traditional perspective, we welcome in the Shabbat. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kedeshanu b'mitzvotav uvdam Yeshua hamashiach v'tzivenu lehiot or legoyim v'natan lenu Yeshua mishachenu or haolam. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by His commandments and the blood of Yeshua the Messiah, and has commanded us to be a light to the nations, and has given us Yeshua, our Messiah, the light of the world. Amen. And we take the cup, which is filled with the fruit of the vine, and we say the blessing, Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, borei pri hagafen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who created the fruit of the vine. And in front of us, we have two halas. And we have two halas because we remember how when the children of Israel wandered through the desert, he gave them manna to eat. But he also gave them a very special commandment that on the Sabbath day, they weren't to work. So God poured out a double portion of his heavenly bread, the manna, an extra amount so that the day before Shabbat, they could collect all that bread, the manna, and they wouldn't have to worry about being fed. So we remember this double blessing that our God pours out on all of those who are faithful to honor his Shabbat. And we say the blessing of the bread, Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam hamotzi lechem min haaretz. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, who brings forth bread from the earth. And we break the bread, and because we know that our Messiah Yeshua is the bread of life, we remember him. And Yeshua, he was born in a very special place, the Bible tells us. It says that he was born in a place called Bethlehem, or Beit Lechem, which literally means the house of bread. So how wonderful is it that, the, that our Messiah, the bread of life, was born in the house of bread. Mm-hmm. Okay, you need it. Go out. Was that good? Okay, let's come around and let me bless you children. So on, on that evening of Shabbat, as we're beginning, and it's called Arab Shabbat, we gather our children together because one of the most important things that we do on the Shabbos, on the Shabbat, is as a family, we spend time together and we bless each other. So we take this time as the dad of the house brings his children around and he first says a blessing over his children. And then traditionally he would read from the book of Proverbs chapter 31, which is the virtuous woman. He would read that over his wife as well. 
And so we're going to just say the blessing over the kids, and we say from the book of Numbers, may the Lord bless you, and may he keep you, and may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you, and may the Lord lift his countenance upon you and bring you his peace. And then I say it in Hebrew. And we say shalom, which means peace and blessings upon you. Thank you so much, children. And you can go, and we'll see you back in just a little while. Hi, Roy. All right, so we, we want to now get into it and, and talk with you just a little bit about what you saw, what the significance of these things are. And so we're, we're going to invite our, our, our brother, Alexander Bolitnikov. We call him Sasha. He's our resident theologian, just keeps us on track. Sasha, why don't you come on out? Well, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat, Shabbat shalom. shalom. It's good to see you, <laughs> Sasha. You know, Sasha, I've, know, I've known you for so many years. And uh, Sasha is, is I, I, I kid, he's our theologian, but truly, Sasha is, is completing his, his uh, PhD, and uh, he, he's just one of the most knowledgeable people in these areas that I know. So it's just a great blessing to have you with us as we celebrate this, this Shabbat. It's good to be with you again on this Shabbat evening. Yes, thank you so much. So we did some interesting things here that are, are, are traditional within the Jewish faith, the Jewish religion. And, and let's start, first of all, with, with the lighting of the candles. Um, as I said in the beginning, uh, the, the tradition is, is that because the woman is the one who Messiah would come through, um, she is the one that brings the light of the Sabbath in. And, and I know that there's a lot of concepts and ideas, the things about the, the Shabbos queen and all those. Can you talk just a little bit about some of those traditional things for us? Uh, one of the things is uh, the principle behind all the tradition to make the Sabbath special. Yes, absolutely. And, uh, uh, of course, uh, we didn't have at this time, first century, second century, we're, we want to backtrack to uh, when Jesus lived on this earth. Yes. Uh, there was no wax candle and uh, uh, nice candle holders, you know, yeah, with... But, but you know what, while you're, before you go any further, let me bring one thing in about this, because the question was asked, you know, we have these beautiful things, the, the beautiful silver uh, cup and plate and these beautiful candle holders. Um, you know, one of the things that, that I always loved within Judaism is, is, and it's not that you're, you're trying to be over the top with these things, but it's just this whole idea that everything that we do, we want to honor God to the highest that we can. So with whatever resources God has given you, when it comes to the things that we are using, especially to honor Him, the Shabbos cup, the candle holders, we want to be able to provide the best that we possibly can. Um, so that's why these things have a tendency to be more decorative and more ornate. And, and the ornament on these candle holders, uh, it's very typical for Jewish community that lives in diaspora. It's the images of Jerusalem. Again, let me say, diaspora means this is, these are Jews that live outside, now it would be outside of Israel, but it would have been outside of Judea. Um, anyone, anyone that lives, so we're in the diaspora. Yeah, but uh, regardless of where Jews live, their eyes are always focused on Jerusalem. On Jerusalem. So you got this Jerusalem candle holders. Yes. But back in those times in Judea of the first century and the turn of the eras, there was nothing like this. Right. Um, there was, uh, the archaeologists have found uh, uh, numerous clay lamps like this shape. Right. And uh, these lamps were, that, that was uh, the, the lighting fixture of yes. the day. Uh, the problem was that these lamps were basically <coughs> using oil, olive oil. Yes. And the olive oil is a major staple. Uh, the level of poverty, uh, you can't compare it to anything back in those days. The majority of the people lived an extremely simple uh, life in, in, in poverty, literally, and uh, you know the gallon of olive oil 
I mean, you can spend today $30, $35, you buy a nice gallon of olive oil, and, you know, three hours of work, something like this. The, the same amount of olive oil uh, would cost back in those days for some uh, day laborers up to three months of their income. Labor. And so uh, lighting in the house, it wasn't the option. For many families, it wasn't the option. People would go to sleep with sundown and, uh, and rise for work with the sunrise. So the Sabbath was exception because that day you're supposed to spend time together as a community, so you do light the candles. Mm. So this is, this is how far we can trace the idea of having the light on Shabbat. So let's, let's talk about the, the idea now of, of the fruit of the vine um, and, and this blessing. And, and it's really probably rightly put sanctification of the Sabbath through, through the cup, correct? Yes, yes. And, and when we talk about the Sabbath, we have to take in, have in mind uh, Genesis chapter 2. What the Lord does, He blesses. He sanctifies and uh, uh, He makes. Right. So I, I also know within, within Jewish tradition today there's the two main themes. And Actually, He rests. So He rested, right. blessed, and sanctified. So everything is, uh, everything on the uh, Sabbath greeting is about these three actions. Right, and it's the remembrance, the core, to, to remember what God had done. Exactly, exactly. Right. So let's, let's talk a little bit about the bread. You know, I, I've had many people get confused because within the Christian community, as soon as you, you talk about bread and, and juice or wine, they, right away their mind goes to the Lord's table or communion. And this isn't anything like that at all. No, that goes um, back. This, this is a, a totally different thing. So, you know, that's, that's maybe a different program at a different time. So let's just talk a little bit, you know, the, what the, the challah, you know, and the idea that, that this represents all foods, not just bread. Exactly. That, that, the, the idea <clears throat> of the bread on Sabbath goes back to the show bread table, which is uh, at the sanctuary. You already mentioned also the manna, and yes. that's why we have two. But right. the general idea, biblically, goes back to the ritual of the showbread. Because uh, remember in the sanctuary, there were daily rituals, yes. uh, offerings of the lambs and lighting of the uh, uh, seven lamp candle mm -hmm. and uh, incense. There were yearly ritual. We discussed the, the festivals. And there were weekly ritual. And the only one weekly ritual which we have. It's a ritual where a, a priest would consume and replace the bread, the, bread, the, bread. Uh, uh, the 12 breads at a special table in the holy place. Right. This ritual is important uh, because it shows, uh, it, it goes directly opposite to uh, pagan sanctuaries. In the pagan worship, the theology is that people uh, feed God. Okay. Mm. Yeah, that's right. And here we pray to God and we say, Blessed are you, Lord God, who gives the bread to us from the ground. Exactly. Right, right. So um, a, a really important part of this then is, is, is the idea of us gathering together. And, and Shabbat is so much about community and about fellowship within the family. And, and um, it, it, it's really, f from a Jewish perspective, it, it, it never should be a burden. It never should be a labor. That Shabbat is always a joy to us. That it's something that you work hard all week long. And then when we come to the Shabbat, it's not, oh, man, it's the Shabbat. No, no it's, oh, thank you, Lord, it's the Shabbat. I don't have to pick up my cell phone. I don't have to check my email. I, can just, I don't have to work. I can just be together with my family and friends and rejoice in the Shabbat. Rachel, um, you've prepared a song for us today. Mm -hmm. And I'd love to invite you to uh, go over and get ready. We have our friend Martine is with us once again. Welcome, Martine. And uh, Rachel, what's the name of the song today? It's called Shabbos Akoidesh, which means Holy Sabbath. It's kind of like the Hebrew version of this is the day that the Lord All right. Made. Well, let's rejoice.
Amen. Amen. Rachel, why don't you come on back over here? Martine, why don't you come join us as we close the Shabbat? We've had just a, a wonderful Sabbath with our family together and a Sabbath meal and a day with the Lord. And as the sun begins to set on the Shabbat, we have a special little ceremony that we do that's called Havdalah. Havdalah, the Hebrew word, it comes from the Hebrew lahavdil, and it means to separate or to differentiate. And what it is is that we're leaving the sacredness, the beauty of the Shabbat, but now we're going into the secular week. But see, the thing is, is that when we leave the Shabbat, we don't want to just leave it behind. We want to be able to take a little bit of the Shabbos with us throughout the week. So Havdalah, we start, and it's chanted with a cup, and we fill it with, with the fruit of the vine. And we fill the cup. And we say a blessing over the cup. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam borei pri hagafen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who brought forth the fruit of the vine. We don't pass this one around, sorry. He's looking at me. I want some juice. <laughs> and then these other strange things that we have. We, we have a special little container. This is called a spice box. Now, I wish those of you watching could, could enjoy the smell. In just a minute, we're going to pass this around. And it's got this beautiful aromatic smell of, of cinnamon and cloves and all kinds of things. And, and it's to remind us of the sweetness of Shabbat mm -hmm. and what the newness of creation will be mm -hmm. when God returns. Since Shabbat is a memorial of creation, we also have this special braided candle. Now, if you remember, when we started the Shabbat, Rachel lit two candles and there was a small little flame. But we're going to light this one in just a minute, and you're going to see it's a much bigger flame. And the whole idea is, is that the light that we go out of the Shabbat with should be so much more than the light that we came in with, because we've spent the whole time with God. Yes? Amen? And we say, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust, and I will not be afraid. For the Lord my God, He is my strength and my song, and He also has become, we could say, my Yeshua, which is his name, but that also means my salvation. And we light this, and then we come back over to the spices, and I'm going to open it up. Mm, I love the smell. Here, smell this. Do you smell it? Smell again. He's afraid to stick his nose down there. Here. And we're going to pass this around, and everyone will get a, get a sniff. And we say, Baruch Tadonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam HaMavdil uh, Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, creator of the universe who creates the species of spices. Doesn't that smell good? You know, some in some traditions, they'll take the cloves and they'll have a big handful, and everyone will take a little handful of cloves, and they put it in their pocket so that when they leave on the Shabbat, when it's over, they have these cloves in their pocket that all week long you can take the cloves and you can smell them and you go, oh man, I can't wait for Shabbos to come again because it smells so good. And then we take this special candle and we say the blessing over the candle. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam borei menei borei mehorei haesh. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe who creates the light of fire. And then because we believe that Yeshua is the light of the world, Jesus is the light of the world. We add this and we say, in him was life and the life was the light of men and the light shined in the darkness and the darkness didn't understand it. Now, there's such a great and beautiful teaching that we have with the Havdalah candle. And, and because we're in a studio and we have all these bright lights, we can't see it as well. But you have to imagine that you know, no matter how small the light is, how small the flame is, you can take one little candle or one little match and you could be in a completely black, dark room and that one little candle, once your eyes adjust, you'll be able to see the whole room, right? So the idea is that this light that we see, the light always pushes the darkness away. And Jesus, Yeshua, is the light of the world. You see, there, where that light is, darkness can never dwell. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Yeah? Yeah, say yeah. Yeah. And then we say, arise and shine, for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And the glory of the Lord that we're speaking of, of course, for us, is our Messiah, Yeshua. 
Amen. He truly is the light of the world. And then we say, blessed are you, O Lord, our God, king of the universe who makes a distinction between the holy and the secular, light and darkness, Israel and the nations, the seventh day and the sixth day of labor. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, who makes a distinction between the holy and the secular. And at this point, the, sh the Shabbat has, is coming completely to an end now. We've had a, a beautiful day and, and we've rested and we've enjoyed fellowship and we've had great meals. Don't you love the Shabbat meals? I do. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what I love about the Shabbat meals is that they're just waiting. We come home from service after the morning and there's this big meal just waiting for us to dive in and eat it. You know, do you like that? Yeah, we all like that. And, and you know, guys, the, the whole idea for us and the Shabbos is that even to say that I keep the Shabbos infers that it takes work to do it. So we should never say we keep the Shabbos. We keep the Sabbath. No, we celebrate the Sabbath. We celebrate what God has given us. We celebrate that God, he created all things. And then the scripture says on the seventh day, he rested. And he said, I want you to remember that if, if God can rest, then how much more should you as my creation, as my children rest on the Sabbath day? So we have to remember that, that the Sabbath day is a joy. It is a time to sit back and, and be with friends and, and talk and, and share things. It's, it's a time that we put aside all the things that we do normally through the week, right? Every, you know, a, a good rule to remember is if you do it through the week, you don't do it on Shabbat, right? Because then it's common. That's right. You know, for some people, oh, to relax is to sit down on the couch and maybe put the TV on. That's not the right thing to do, is it? Because all week long, people are sitting on the couch watching TV. We're supposed to get together as a family and talk and Bye. enjoy good food and, and, and really look forward. You know, for a lot of people, that might be the only time that they actually come together as a family. Mm. And, and some of the best memories that we ever make are the ones of us sitting around. And you know, uh, our, our society is so full of broken families, of children that never have the time with their parents and, and if we were honoring, if we were celebrating the Shabbat in the way that God asked us to do, that wouldn't be happening because we would be focusing, we would be saying blessings upon our children and, and our wives and our friends and our family. We would be coming together, especially that one time. And you know what I found is that when you do it on the Shabbat and it's such a joy, you get hungry for it, mm -hmm. right? Man, I really I loved the time that we sat down together and we had a meal and we just talked. And you know, just because we do this on the Shabbat doesn't mean we can't do it many other days through the week. And that's the idea that we want to be hungry. The Shabbat is something very special, but God created it so that we could rest, so that we could fellowship. So as the sun has set on another Shabbat, the last thing that we do is what's left of the juice as we take the cup and we begin to pour out the cup. And for us as believers in Jesus as our Messiah, what I believe we should understand is just as we pour out this cup, we need to remember that our Messiah, that Jesus, poured out his life for us. And may we, through this week, God, with your strength and your Holy Spirit, may we also pour out our lives for him. Mm -hmm. Pour it all out. And the last thing that we do is we take the Havdalah candle and we extinguish the candle in the juice. Sorry, no one gets to drink it. We extinguish the candle and we declare that God is holy. He is holy. He is holy. And we see Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. That means God is three times holy because he is the one that gives us the Shabbat. God bless you, and we hope to see you very soon on Back to Our Roots.